What's up, everybody? It's Brandon. I'm back with another knee-jerk reaction review. This one, again, is, of course, for Dexter. New blood. Now, I covered last week's episode. Obviously, I didn't start with number two. So if you're continuing from that, we're going to keep doing spoilers because... Shit, I just want to dive deep into the show. I'm not trying to do this whole, like, sugar-coated here, here, and there. If you've seen the episode, this is what you need to tune into. So, you know, so we can discuss. Of course, of course. Okay, episode two. This one picks up right where we fucking left off, where Dexter is taking Harrison back to his home. He's saying, you know what? This is my son. I will take care of him. And it starts off kind of comical because you see Dexter and now we are fully inside of his head, which is cool. He's starting to talk to himself. I was wondering if that was something they were kind of, you know, taking a step back on or if they were like, okay, by the end of the episode on the last episode, he found himself again. So now we're going to get this going forward. He is doing that again. He's sitting there talking to Harrison. He's just like, what do I say to the kid I abandoned? You know, like it was like that subtle, dry Dexter humor that we know and love. I felt a little bit more of that in this episode naturally because a lot of where that came from was him talking to himself in his own head. Um, and then we get some uh, a little bit of a bomb dropped on us, something I was asking. I'm like, where the hell is Hannah McKay? Could she even be a killer? But according to Harrison, um, she's dead. Yes, she died of pancreatic cancer. I think he said it was pancreatic. Um, so that is a big bomb for us as Dexter fans because we were kind of wondering, like, will Hannah McKay come back? What happened to Hannah McKay? Blah, 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 blah. Well, now we know. But something that's interesting that my buddy had actually brought up, he was like, I actually think after watching this episode that, you know, Harrison is actually just playing Dexter right now. Now, that was an interesting concept to me because I was like, you know what? I didn't think about it, but could very well be fucking true, couldn't it? Because, I mean, what if, man? And the kid does that plays uh, Harrison. He does have that, like, innocent face, but he also does have this, like, look like he could turn it on. You know what I mean? Now, maybe that could be used in later episodes as, you know, we find out he does have killer urges to that extent. But maybe it could be an even further extent where he already knows he has killer urges and he has acted on them even, maybe even killing Hannah, you know? Some deep thoughts there that are kind of creepy and crazy to think about and just imagine the world of hurt that would put Dexter in for him to not only have to, you know, maybe teach Harrison the code, but also come to grips with the reason why he's having to teach him the code is because his first victim was actually Hannah. And the whole time we were all wondering as fans when season eight ended, that was one of the biggest complaints is like, how could you leave Harrison with Hannah McKay, this girl that poisoned all these people. This is what a bunch of the naysayers were saying. We fear for Harrison. As it turns out, maybe we should have feared for Hannah McKay. <laughs> yeah, who knows, man, but that's something to think about. Um, what else in this episode? Um, we get a search party at Dexter's house. I mean, the fucking, <laughs> you know, I, I will say this. Uh, we do kind of get like, you know, a back and forth. Will Harrison actually stay? Because he says he's came for answers. So there is a bit of that in the beginning. Towards the end, we do kind of get the feel that they, of course, are going to, you know, stay together. I mean, Harrison hits him with Theo like, you know, and I might stay for a while after they have a deep talk that we'll talk about a little later in the review. But at the end of the day, like, you know what that means. Like, he's a young kid, like, I think I might stay for a while, but I'm going to stay for a while. Or who knows, maybe like in episode seven, he has that runaway moment, and that's when the new killer's involved, gets a hold of him, and it makes it intense. You know, there's still so many theories, guys. Jesus. But the search party breaks out after, you know, Harrison and um, Dexter's first talk, and it's coming up. And, you know, what? I forget what the name of the episode is. I think he even quotes the name of the episode. It's like a world of fuck or shit storm of fuck. Like, did, did Deb write this? Did Deb fucking write this episode? Sounds like a title that she would have. Which also, she's a lot more like Deb in this one, by the way. Cussing up a storm. And we'll talk more about her. But you're wondering in the moment because... You know, this shitstorm of fuck, I think is what the name of the episode is. I think it's coming back to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't, you know, quote me on it. But Dexter's looking at all these cops pulling up. He's like, damn, like maybe I'm slipping. You know what I mean? Like maybe I have fucked up. You know, like I haven't done this in a long time. Maybe I'm rusty. He was literally in the process of covering up blood from the guy he had murdered the night before as they were pulling up and making jokes about like, yeah, teenagers sleep until 12, right? 
which you know what? I was a teenager once. Believe it or not, uh, they do. So he got away with that until the cops pulled up, and you're kind of wondering, what is this? And they're like, oh, it's a search party. You're This is like a good base camp. It fits the area we're trying to search. Do you mind? And Dexter, of course, you know, being slick is like, yeah, no, no, I don't mind. It's all good. Um, let me uh, set, help you all set up and all this shit. And that's when Dexter's new girl sees Harrison. And at first, she's kind of alarmed because she's like, how do I not know about this kid? How do I not know that you have a kid? But as you know, the episode unfolds, she kind of understands like he was thrown onto him kind of, and it's a bit more of a complicated situation that in the end, actually, Dexter had kind of feared that it would draw them apart more. Looks like it's actually bringing them closer, which is kind of weird how that worked out, at least for in Dexter's eyes, because he didn't see it going that way. Um, I was kind of mixed on how that would go. I definitely didn't expect them to split that young, though. But in the process of this, um, Dexter, you know, you get to see, like, classic Dexter. You know, classic Dex, where he's just, like, hiding in plain sight to perfection. He's thinking on the fly to perfection. Like, he, he's like this, um, what he always was, except towards the later seasons, where he started to pick up on a few more emotions. But he's this cold, calculated, what feels like emotionless person. Cause he, so he can, like, focus and be so sharp in, like, the most tense of moments. Like, he doesn't miss a beat. Even the voice in his head doesn't sound like sporadic erratic or erratic like it didn't you know all those other times we heard him in the previous seasons he's just calmly like oh no 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 let me go out there i got my rtv and you know that'll tread better in the snow probably and blah 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 whatever he says and him and harrison go and he's over there covering up the little blood spills you know that he had along the way fixing his mistakes so calmly and then when they pull up on the scene and there's a dead you know the dead white deer that we saw from the last episode we're sitting there looking at it and you're like what's he gonna do now of course <laughs> fucking johnny on the spot here dexter's like no no you know what it's probably a crime scene you think you can drive that drive back and now dexter is alone in these woods or is he not quite because you know the spirit of deb is just laughing at him she's saying just like oh my god i've heard of killers return to the scene of the crime but this is a fucking riot or whatever she says and she's just laughing and that's where you kind of get to really focus in on Deb, at least at this point in the review. Earlier in the episode, she really let Dexter have it. She was banging on the window when he first was talking to Harrison about staying with the bullet, you know, assuming that shot her. And she literally, like, come, breaks the glass, comes from behind him, like, grabs him up, shoves the bullet, like, in his mouth. Like, if you don't kill him, you're at least going to fuck him up. And that's what she's doing this whole episode. She's just ruthless. Like she's not. She's letting. She's not letting Dexter off with a pass. She's letting him have it. And Dexter is losing his mind in the process because he's sitting there, you know, trying to convince her that yeah, I know I might have killed this guy, but I'm a different person now. Maybe the person I am now can raise him. And Deb's just trying to let him know, like, you're fucking this up. Are you that selfish? Do you really not understand? You had a slip. You're a serial killer. You're thinking about killing somebody right now, aren't you? You know. She's letting him have it. You know, it's tough love. She's playing, you know, that sister role, that strong sister role. She's trying to give it to him because she knows first fucking hand what Dexter can do to people, what can be done to people, not even what Dexter deliberately does, but the effects of shit Dexter does. It all comes back around and ruins people's lives. So she's worried for Harrison. You know, she was proud of Dexter. She was proud of letting Dexter, you know, not letting Dexter, but watching Dexter be this new guy to get away from everything. It was a big step for him. And Deb looked at herself as that, you know, final nail. And here she is, like, she might not be the final nail anymore. And that hurts her. So you can understand where she's coming from. And I really like her character as this new Harry, even though she is nothing like Harry. She's not telling him how to kill. She's warding him away from killing. But at the end of the day, you can tell, like, she doesn't hate him. She might even act like it. At the end of the day, you know she's going to love Dexter with all her heart. But she's also going to tell him what the fuck is up at any time. <laughs> but other things. Um, Dexter, of course, does find his mistake. You know, he takes some Windex to a rock, as, like, Deb says. And he's basically cleaned up his tracks. He plants one of, uh, I forget the dude's name. I know, I'm know i so bad with names. I like to do these on the fly. The guy he killed his glove over there, you know, Caldwell, the son or whatever, plants his glove over there, basically sets it up. Perfect mastermind Dexter shit as a fan. You're like, yep, he's out of this. And then, uh, you know what? Let's dial it back a little bit. We're at the, in the meantime, we are seeing this girl 
at other parts of the episode where she is like locked away in this room that almost looks like maybe a hotel and she's just like She's acting funny. She's getting progressively sick. And there's somebody watching her. And this is like a dialed up thing that happens three or four times. It'll cut to and you're like, who's this girl? Who's this girl? And I didn't actually look this up. But I'm thinking, is this the girl from the first episode in the bar that uh, Dexter's girl, the you know, his girlfriend, gives the girl money? Or she buys her food or something? I think that might be that same drifter character. Maybe I'm wrong. I didn't look this up. I didn't match it up. But I think that might be the same girl. Because, like, when I was watching it first, I was like, who's this chick? And I was like, wait a minute. Is that that girl? So this might be her. And if she's this drifter character, doesn't have money, that's the type of people that serial killers focus in on and kill. That would make sense. And then maybe the third episode, they find her body even. They're like, what the hell is going on here? We had this body that Dexter killed. And now we have this body. And then we can kind of tie it all together. Like, oh, that's the girl from the first episode. But maybe I caught on that a little earlier because you only see her briefly in the first episode. My wife was talking about this too. But it's something that I was thinking about. I'm like, is that the same girl? Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. I need to look it up after this, even though I probably should have done it before. But while we're seeing that, if you, if you fucking know anything about it, they basically announced that the killer was, you know, the actor. I forget his name, of course. You know, name on the spot. But it's the guy that played the dad. At the very end, we find out at the end of the episode that it is that guy's dad. The guy that Dexter killed. And the guy that Dexter killed warned him about his dad. And then I remember them saying, when they were like teasing the show, and they were confirming actors, at one point they said, this actor, whoever the guy is that plays the dad, is the killer in the new season. So... We get to see him, so we now can pretty much piece two and two together. Like, that's who is watching her. So this is all coming together kind of nicely all of a sudden. Like, we're, you know, part of me wanted to slow down just a little bit, but at the same time, the thought of having all this intertwined and picking up the way it is so beautifully with eight episodes to go is very nice, actually. So I'm kind of hyped about that. Um, Some other shit that's going on, as we'll dive a little bit more back into that here in a second, um, Harrison gets to meet, you know, some kids around the town. He gets to meet Dexter's girlfriend's uh, daughter, who he kind of hits it off with. I'm like, is, man, I could see them. Like, maybe they could start dating, but then that's weird because his dad's dating her mom. But I'm wondering, too, and another, like, kind of theory, if may- maybe, you know, maybe uh, Harrison doesn't know anything about Dexter. Now, maybe it comes to a head to where he does find out about Dexter, And when he does find out about Dexter, he's now really close with Dexter's girlfriend's daughter. And now he's talking to her like you can't tell anybody. And she is the person that blows everything up where she goes to her mom because, you know, Dexter's son and Dexter's girlfriend's daughter is so close now. That could end up hurting Dexter in terms of information being passed. So that's something I was also thinking about that could possibly potentially happen um, she seems like a cool character. The people she's hanging out with, I mean, here's the thing. This type of town seems very isolated, small. Maybe, you know, you don't really have that many people to choose from to hang out with. Like, who knows how many people are even in the schools. Um, it's just like they were just complete dicks. And I think that's something that kind of weighed this one compared to the first one down a little bit for me. I didn't really enjoy hanging out with the kid characters other than Harrison and the girl. Like the other kids, they did what they were supposed to do, but they annoyed me a little bit. And then uh, bouncing back and forth with that girl, it was kind of like fun. Like the first or second times you're like, you're wondering, I'm talking of course about the girl that was like trapped in the hotel room or whatever room she was trapped in with the person watching. That kind of got old to some degree because like the first couple times I was like, oh, who is this? But by the third and fourth time I was like, who the fuck is that the girl from the first one episode? Like I was starting to get angry. Like I'm just like, I just want to know what's going on. Like, you know, and the... It's one of those things, they'll reveal that, I'm sure. It's not going to just go completely unwarranted why that even happened. So we'll know more about that situation. But for right now, it's kind of frustrating. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I mean, other than that, we get the very ending where, like I said, the dad of the guy that Dexter killed does come back. And when he does come back, he's they had just called the search party off. They said the evidence was conclusive that it was his glove. He probably did just shoot the deer, which was illegal, in that part of the forest or whatever. So he probably fleed, and the dad will have none of it. He's like, how much have I done for this town? 
you know, this is, I forget the name, something Lakes, whatever the name of the town is. And we don't stand for this shit. Like, like you, we stand up for each other. We have each other's backs. He kind of rallies the town people. And he tells Dexter at the very end, you know, introducing him to his son. He's like, this is your son? So, like, this could be interesting by the end of the show. Very curious about that. You know, this is such the tip of the iceberg, as I was saying. Last review. And just wondering what could come of this trio, like kidnapping of Harrison, coming at Dexter, seeing the more aggressive side of this killer in this season. I'm very curious, but he, as he was talking about his son, he's like, I will find him, I know he will, we'll have no stone you know, left unturned. And Dexter just kind of just like, oh yeah, some will, and it kind of like goes under the fireplace, and there's just a fucking his body and all the, these bags. Of course, Dexter disposed of them in, and it was just, it was a perfect ending. It was like, oh my God, like, let's get to episode three, right? Like, it, it, was, it was pretty great. I'm into it, man. This episode took a little bit of a step back for me, but not much. Like, it, I'm going to say, it seemed like a lot of people love this one even more, but I, I like the pacing of the first episode more, and I think I even was on, like, cloud nine, even more, just because, like, oh, my God, I'm watching Dexter right now. And I had two high hopes for episode two. In saying that, though, this was still... I, I'll say this is a great episode. Um, it set more... It set the table for more things. It definitely got my brain, you know, wandering around, like, fuck, dude, where could this go? What Are we going to do this? You know, the fan theories were flying. It did everything it was supposed to do. And we got a little bit more closer to, like, what the true plot of the season is going to be. And it's it's solid so far, man. I'm going to give this one a, a great rating, too. But instead, I think I gave last week an 8.5. I'm going to give this one a great to me as an 8 and above. I'm going to give it right at a barely a great, an 8 out of 10. But it does get that 8 out of 10. I mean, it's a hell of a score. I love some Dexter, and this is not disappointing so far, man. Really, really enjoyed this episode. Like I said, there's a couple things, and one of those things I think can even improve once we have more knowledge on the situation. And then there was just amazing scenes in it as well, like uh, Dexter with Harrison when he was breaking down, kind of telling him, like, I have demons, I didn't want to pass on you, kind of like loosely explaining why he really left. That kind of gave me chills a little bit. And it gave me chills when uh, Deb was, like, knocking on that window saying, you're going to fuck him up, and was, like, with her bullet that went through her. There were some great moments here as well. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think, man. I had a blast with this one, too. I'm so ready for episode three. Don't let it in, right? Don't let it in. Love y'all, man. Like, share, and subscribe, please. And we'll be back with some more Dexter talk on episode three. Thank you so much.